Hello and welcome everyone to our uh, webinar for today, your Build Your Simulation IQ Simulation Mechanical webinar. My name is Marwan Azam and today presenting will be Andrew Sartorelli. Um, today's topic is Pressure Vessel Analysis and ASME Section 8 Division 2 Part 5. Um, Andrew is going to go through some slides and he's going to show us three examples today and of course you are free to um, pose any questions that you have during the simulation. I will try to answer them all. Uh, but before we do that, we have our own uh, three questions, poll questions that we want to have answers from you. Uh, the first question, I'm going to pose that out and uh, I want you to vote on it. How often do you perform pressure vessel analyses in simulation mechanical? So, every week, occasionally, rarely or never, uh, choose your answer and uh, the poll is open. We'll see what, uh, what everyone says. Okay. Um, the results are in, I think. Looks like everyone answered. It's not changing. 30% um, of you do it every week, 38% occasionally, 31% rarely, and 19% never. Um, so most of you do it to you know some extent, 13% um, every week and 38 occasionally. Um, let's do the next uh, poll question here and uh, are you familiar with the ASME Section 8, Division 2, Part 5 code uh, that pertains to the pressure vessels. So the answers are, I've heard of it but never used it. I've used it a little. I'm an expert. And what? Okay, seems like everyone who wants to answer have answered. 70%, oh no, it's still changing. Give it a few more seconds here. All right, well, the results are in. 17% uh, heard of it but never used it. 33% uh, uh, have used it a little. 11% are experts and 39% which are the majority answered what um, still got a couple more answers um, but it sounds like for the majority they either never heard of it or uh, they've used it a little bit all right on to the third and last poll question here do you ever use PV designer, the PV designer module or component of simulation mechanical, yes or no? And by the way, I mean some some of you who have answered no might not know what the PV designer component is. What PV designer is, it's a little um, utility that comes with simulation mechanical that allows you to build uh, pressure vessels. So all the input is directed, it's like a wizard, directed to building pressure vessels. So you specify the cylinder, um, diameter and length and how many nozzles you have and heads on the nozzles and how they're oriented and so on. So it's a utility that um, if you have multiple nozzles, we generate a model out of plate elements or shell elements and I think it can also do that but only for one nozzle using brick elements. So if you have multiple nozzles, uh, it will build the model out of shell elements. So it's a very uh, neat parametric um, wizard that allows you to design your own pressure vessels without having basically to import a CAD model or to build it by hand. Um, 30% of you answered yes, 70% of you answered no. All right, um, those are our poll questions. I will now 
I'll hand it over to Andrew who will um, talk to us about pressure vessels. Thanks Marlon. Um, so this week I'll be talking about ASME Section 8, Division 2, Part 5, Design by Analysis. Um, just to go over some of the other topics that we've covered. Um, so uh, last month uh, James Kubli did uh, simulation CFD interoperability with um, simulation mechanical. And you can find that as well as all of our other uh, previous webinars on our YouTube channel, Autodesk Sim 360. Um, and typically we'll announce these on the simulation mechanical uh, forum through LinkedIn, direct email on our Twitter page, as well as our Facebook page. Um, I believe the um, webinars are now a series, so once you sign up for one, you should get the announcement every month uh, for the next one. All right. Um, so what's in the news? Um, so we've announced that we'll be retiring Autodesk Subscription Center on March 13th. Uh, so it's a little less than a month from now. Um, and everything is now going to go through Autodesk account. So you can log into uh, autodesk.com forward slash account. Um, and you'll be presented with a, a page similar to the, the image that you see here. Um, and it will list all of your products and services that you have available to you. And now to create a support case, um, you'll see an option up in the upper right-hand corner right next to your name uh, for support. If you click that up um, arrow there, there'll be a couple options. One of those is going to be contact us. And that'll uh, guide you through the steps to um, either create a support case on the web if you have basic or advanced support. Um, there'll be a phone number available if you have advanced support. Or if you, have, uh, if you don't have support, um, there'll be um, some, some knowledge base information there as well as I believe directing you uh, to the, the, the product forms. So that's uh, something really important to be aware of. Um, there'll be a redirect on the subscription center page, um, but it may be a good time now to, to get yourself a little bit familiar with it because um, that page is up now. I don't believe it's um, fully active with all the um, case creation capabilities. Um, but it's going to be there, so poke around with it if you get a chance and um, just make yourself aware of it. Um, so here are a few um, articles that were created um, this past month in uh, February. Um, so you can see we've generated some, some help articles, and those are going to be available at knowledge.autodesk.com. Um, and that's our, our, our help page. Um, so today, like I said, I'll be going over um, a specific section of the ASME code. Uh, Section 8, Division 2, uh, Part 5. Um, so we'll be going over what is it, what kind of analysis can we do, how do I use it, and then I'll be going into an example of uh, plastic collapse. And there's a couple different ways you can uh, do that plastic collapse. Um, so I'll go through, I'll talk about the uh, three different options available there. Um, so what is ASME uh, Section 8, Division 2, Part 5? So it provides you with a procedure um, to perform a, a stress analysis and evaluate those results for things like plastic collapse, local failure, buckling, and cyclic loading. It does not provide um, the explicit methods uh, for setting up your, your analysis, different modeling approaches, as well as how to validate your results. So the, the second part here, this is all going to be dependent on your engineering expertise. Um, so this isn't something that necessarily um, you know, is going to be defined in ASME code. Um, but it's certainly something that, you know, uh, we can give you guidelines that, uh, on support as maybe some approaches to take for modeling or some methods to use or uh, how you could go about validating your results. So uh, there's a couple different types of uh, loading cases and loads that get uh, considered. Um, so the, the four main um, load setups that are considered with the, the code are pressure testing, normal operation, normal operation with occasional loads, and startup operation plus occasional loads. Um, so you can see here there's about five to six different load types um, that would be included um, in each of these analysis depending on what stage of the process that you're going to be analyzing. So just take a minute there, you know, um, some of these would be factored in at, at different areas um, in the analysis so there'll be load um, factors that are included. Um, so what is plastic collapse? Plastic collapse is really, as you can see here, we're, we're going to have um, rupturing of a pressure vessel due to plastic deformation. 
Um, so here I took a snapshot of um, right before uh, cl plastic collapse in um, one of the, the example models that I'll do a little bit later here. So there are three main ways to analyze against plastic collapse according to this a ASME section. Um, so we have elastic stress analysis, limit load, and elastic plastic uh, stress analysis. So um, elastic stress analysis is a will be a linear static um, stress. So that's your basic uh, LSS analysis, and we're going to evaluate some stresses uh, generated during that analysis um, against established uh, allowable stress values. Um, so this type of analysis requires you to go into uh, stress and linearization to pull out some of those stresses, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, limit load and uh, elastic plastic are going to be um, nonlinear analyses. Um, so we're going to typically go into either a static stress with nonlinear materials or my preferred method, uh, mechanical event simulation or MES, um, to, to set up some of these materials. And we're going to find um, allowable loads based on uh, typically load factors um, that factor in um, some different safety factors from the ASME code. So elastic stress analysis method is um, going to depend on your membrane and bending stresses as well as thermal stresses and some other secondary stresses. Um, so this type of analysis would require using a stress linearization tool um, as well as setting up uh, stress classification lines. So um, in my opinion, this, this takes a lot of effort to go into a stress linearization tool and set up some of these um, SCLs. And it does require some in-depth knowledge of how to uh, accurately set up those, those stress classification lines. Um, so that may not be, um, you know, the best approach here. Um, setting up something like a limit load analysis is really just dependent on setting up nonlinear materials. Um, so it's going to depend, the, the feel, failure criteria of a limit load uh, method analysis is going to be whether the analysis converges or not. Um, so we'll see in one of my examples later, I have a, a setup where it doesn't converge, and that to me suggests plastic failure. Um, so ASME um, specifies that you need to use an elastic, perfectly plastic material, and um, in simulation mechanical, we would define that as a, a von Mises with isotropic hardening, and then to uh, have that perfectly plastic, uh, we would set up a very, very tiny uh, strain, ha strain hardening modulus. Um, so as you can see here, I've defined a strain ha hardening modulus of uh, one e to the negative six. Um, so very small, uh, essentially a flat line there. And then we're going to have load co uh, case combination and load case factors. Um, so we're going to be multiplying some of the um, design pressures and design loads um, by some of these factors to determine if there's going to be global or local plastic collapse. Okay, so there's some steps set forth in the uh, ASME code to um, set up a limit load analysis. So we would generate our model geometry. So you could take a uh, 2D geometry or 3D geometry, bring that into simulation mechanical, set it up in the FEA editor, add some of your boundary conditions and loads. Um, you would determine and define the loads acting on the component. And so we would refer to that previous slide um, that had the um, loads to consider. So if I go back here, we'd, we would take a look here, and this is where we would pull some of those loads from to know exactly what we need to include in our analysis. Um, we would define an elastic, perfectly plastic material. So again, that would be a von Mises with isotropic hardening. And we'd define a yield strength equal to um, 1.5S. And uh, to, again, to ensure that we have perfectly plastic, uh, we would specify that strain harden, hardening modulus as 1E negative 6. Um, determine, and then step four, determine if low case combinations are necessary. Uh, generally, in some of the examples I'll be doing, that isn't a requirement. And then we would um, run our MES analysis and determine if we have um, convergence. If it does converge, then we know um, that we're, we're all set. Again, the, now the, the next one, um, elastic plastic stress analysis method. So this one will be defining a full stress strain curve uh, for the material. Um, so that would be a von Mises curve with isotropic hardening, and that curve is going to allow you 
to enter in a variety of uh, stress strain data. Um, so here we have slightly different uh, load case combinations and load factors. Uh, so you can see here uh, 2.4 and 1.7. If we go back, um, that was 1.5 and 1.7. Um, so slightly different uh, load factors there. Again, the setup here is um, essentially the same as the, the limit load. Uh, again, now we're going to be using a von Mises curve with isotropic hardening rather than von Mises with isotropic hardening. All right, so I'm going to jump into an example here. Um, and this comes from the ASME um, example problem manual. Um, so what we have is we have a pressure vessel. It has an uh, internal pressure of uh, 420 PSI gauge. And then there's going to be a pipe thrust at the very top there. And that's going to be equal to about 982 uh, PSI. Uh, so we've got some uh, materials defined in the um, example here, uh, AS516 uh, for the shell and the head, and then AS, or excuse me, SA105 for the forgings. Um, and the, the goal here is to determine if there is going to be a plastic collapse. All right. So I'm going to pull up my uh, design scenario for here, which is a limit load analysis. Give it a second to, to open up. So I've got a pressure defined on this internal uh, surface here. If we zoom in, we'll see that the pressure acts on this internal surface. And again, we have to use a, um, a load factor here. So I believe um, for limit load, that was going to be 1.7 um, 1 or 1 1.5, excuse me. Um, times our uh, 420 uh, PSI gauge. So we've uh, added in that factor there. And we also have a uh, pressure on the top that's a thrust. Um, so that pipe thrust, again, is going to be um, factored by that, um, that value again, so 1.5. And one of the tricky things here I found when, when setting this up um, with a customer was that we wanted this thrust only to be on a, a small uh, subsec subsection of this model, um, or, or this surface up here. Um, so although the glyphs say it's on the entire surface, um, we actually went in and we used the selection tool. We selected these lines specifically. We edited the attributes, and we redefined them for a new surface. And by doing that, we're able to apply the load strictly to that um, to these elements here with that pressure. Now, um, some of you may be saying, well, why not use a, a force, a nodal force here? And when we use a, a force on a axisymmetric model, uh, we get an uneven distribution. Um, so we want this to be evenly distributed across all elements. Um, and that's why we went with the pressure here. So we'll take a quick look at some of the um, element definitions here. So again, we have this defined as uh, von Mises with isotropic hardening, we're doing axisymmetric and small displacement. And we go in and we'll take a look at the material properties here. Again, we, we can see that we have a very small strain hardening modulus. Um, we've set up our yield and other um, material properties in accordance with the um, materials set forth in the ASME example. And now we'll go ahead and take a look at the results. So we can see we converged on a result and um, according to the ASME guidelines for uh, Section 5, uh, according to the ASME code, um, this means that the um, pressure vessel meets code. So we'll take a look at the solve log and we can just take a look through and we see that it, it stepped through and it only really started to encounter a little hiccup at 100%. Um, so everything seems to um, be in order. Now this was benchmarked against a uh, example that um, ASME had done um, in Abacus and our results seem to match up fairly well with that. Um, so just to show you um, what would happen if it did.
didn't um, converge, we'll pull up this um, 1800 PSI one here. And we'll step back through. So we'll take a look at the solve log again. Now you see we get some very large displacements and it's str struggling, struggling to converge and then we get very far down here, it's dropping down and then we start to see um, that it's, it's, yield, it's um, collapsed. So we've exceeded the plastic stream um, and we have no results for those sections so we know that the model did not converge with this, uh, this load here. Uh, so we'll just step into the elastic plastic example. Hey, Andrew, it's Kate. Do you have a question out there, Kate? Yeah, um, I have two. Okay. Uh, in your PowerPoint, slide you um, were referring to S. Can you define that? Sure. Let define me just pull up my code uh, sample here. I believe that was going to be the, uh, the yield stress that's defined in the, uh, for the material property. And then because we're doing the limit load, we're going to be increasing that. Um, definition in our material to 1.5 that. Um, let's see if I can find that in it looks like that is the case. It looks like that was the um, the yield. Okay, and then um, Steve also asks in your example you're using an asymmetric model because you have a symmetric pressure load only. What do you do if the non-symmetric loads like seismic or wind loads? What would you do in that instance? Right, so if we're going to be doing um, something like that where we have non-symmetric loading, I think that would be the case where we start getting into um, the solid elements uh, rather than going with a, a 2D analysis here. Um, and obviously the one of the benefits of using the limit load or elastic plastic um, over um, the elastic method is that you're going to be able to just define nonlinear material properties and then go from there um, rather than having to define the uh, go into stress linearization and then set up uh, SCLs that might get a, quite a bit more complicated and ASME actually recommends uh, that work when working with complex geometry and complex loading that you use the limit load or elastic plastic method um, because it's easier um, to set up and, and analyze um, than doing something like the elastic method. Okay, um, that's all for now. Steve, let me know if that uh, answers your questions or if you'd like Andrew to dive deeper. So here we'll, we'll just take a look at the, um, the material properties. Again, um, this will be uh, Vomyces uh, isotropic hardening with a, a curve. So we have a full set of stress strain data. And again, this was pulled from the ASME um, example manual um, that included these uh, material properties. And then we've modified our load again um, to represent that now uh, we're going to be working at uh, 2.4 as our load scale factor rather than 1.5. So we've again increased that pressure value uh, significantly here. Um, and again with the, uh, the, thrust, the thrust as well. Okay, and we'll just dive into the results. So I've made some modifications there to the um, materials when I went in and looked. Oh, let's see. It looks like I may have cut this one short accidentally. So we'll just take a look at the stresses. Yeah, it looks like I lost a bit of my, uh, my results there. But we'll 
See it continues to uh, converge down here. Let's just take a look. May have forgot to rerun this with my um, smaller load case here. So let's take a look. Edit. That's the top one. Edit. 100. So what we can do is we can run this now. All right. And while that's running, we'll jump into um, scenario one. And I'll just give everyone a, a view of the uh, stress linearization tool in case you're not aware of um, how to access it. Um, so we're going to go into the results environment for this model and we can actually just open up here on the results contours tab under other results we have stress linearization so it's a separate utility and it's going to take a couple seconds here to open up. Alright and it's a little bit hard to move around sometimes so we'll just go in and we'll take a look here. Now if we want to create a stress concentration line, click that node and we'll do selection. All right, so you can see we've already got a node selected up there, but we may not want that. And we'll go into node two and we'll create another line there. Uh, so this is where you would generate your, your uh, membrane and bending stresses if you're going to do the uh, simply elastic method um, rather than going into the limit load or elastic plastic method. Um, so there's some guidelines in ASME code for where you should be setting up uh, some of these SCLs. Um, so you know I, I would read through there if you're interested in uh, taking this approach. Um, like I said it's a bit more complex to set up and analyze because you do have to generate uh, a number of stress concentration lines and then you're going to be using some of these membrane and bending stresses as well as thermal stresses and secondary stresses um, to um, use as uh, benchmarks against your allowable stresses. Um, so it takes a bit more number crunching um, than simply setting up a nonlinear material um, and checking to see if the model converges. Um, Go ahead and close that. Now it's probably going to take a little bit. Let's take a look here. Do we have any more uh, questions out there, Kate? Nope, we're good for now. Okay. So it looks like we're about See, we're, we're still pretty far below our um, max on our stress strain curve here. I believe that was around uh, about 90,000 uh, PSI. So this is really the, the end of my um, examples here. I just jumped into one of the um, you know examples that's provided by uh, the ASME um, example manual. So obviously we um, in a future webinar, we could go into um, local failure, uh, protection against uh, collapse from buckling, um, and then as well as uh, failure by cyclic loading. Um, so let's go ahead and, while that's running, open up another model of simulation mechanical. And Marwan mentioned at the beginning that we have uh, a utility called Pressure Vessel Designer, PV Designer. So that's another way to generate some of these models. If you're going to be going ahead and doing a, a 3D analysis, um, you know we can go ahead and um, generate that model maybe a little bit easier um, than if you have to go into a CAD package. Um, so we'll go into PV Designer. We'll select New, and we'll do uh, PV Sample. Select our unit system. All right. Uh, maybe because we're running uh, multiple instances here that we're not able to. Um, let's see. Uh -oh.
Looks like I've got an icon here that won't go away, so if you give me just a moment. There we go. So it looks like I'm not able to open that up at the same time that I got Pew as the uh, analysis running. So at this point, I'd, I'd really like to, to open it up to uh, questions. Um, hopefully we can start a dialogue about uh, pressure vessel analysis. If anyone has any you know, uh, additional questions out there about um, maybe approaches to take that we can give some guidance on, or even if you have questions not related to uh, pressure vessels, we're certainly glad to answer any of those. doesn't look like there are any questions coming in right now, but as Andrew mentioned, feel free to ask either pertaining to today's webinar if you, or if you have a general question um, about using the software, feel free to ask that as well. So, so if there's no questions, what I'll do is I'll stop the analysis and I'll just jump into the PV designer to give people a, a view of that if they're not um, too familiar with it. Looks like we may have a question here. So uh, Steve is looking for the um, converged elastic plastic result. Um, so actually, if you go on, we pull up this PowerPoint here. Uh, if we take a look here down the bottom, there's a uh, download option uh, for t today's presentation. Um, so you actually find, if you go to that link, there'll be a Simulation Mechanical 2015 archive file for this webinar that contains um, all of the, um, the models that I've run here, the limit load elastic plastic, elastic plastic with the uh, 1800 PSI, and as well as a limit load uh, that's been kind of uh, scratched and eliminated the, uh, the boundary conditions there uh, for you to take a look at and see how to, to set things up. like give us a second here if you'd like Andrew I can share my screen I got PV designer yeah. up yeah Marwan if you want to take a take a look at that yeah yeah all right there we go um so you probably saw that screen in the background, but Andrew just couldn't get to it. This is the PV designer, um, like I said, wizard. Um, it allows you to, you know, this is what we call the cylinder here, the green part, part one, and this is the nozzle. So you can have single nozzle as we have here. Let's say you want to go with a single nozzle. You can either select the element type to be plate or shell or solid. Um, if you switch that to a multiple nozzle, then the Actually, I thought that was, uh, okay, multiple nozzles should only allow you a shell element. But let's say we want multiple um, nozzles. You click on that, and you get the geometry. So this is, so this is our um, cylinder. 
the length, let's say if we change that to 50 and the diameter of 12, uh, you get something like this, you can hit apply, extras, what you can put are flanges uh, on the end of the cylinder if you want, uh, you can have heads and you can define multiple heads. Now, of course, if I'm going to pull up numbers here out of my head, <laughs> no pun intended, it's just going to probably throw some kind of an error because they're not going to make sense. But, you know, you can go in and you can define heads on the negative side and the positive side of the uh, cylinder. The head can either be flat, spherical, ellipsoidal, uh, ellipsoidal uh, toraspherical, or conical. Um, for each one of those, you enter the appropriate parameters and it shows you those here. Um, positive side and negative side are going to be identical, just on the opposite sides. Um, you can control the mesh and you can control the part numbers that these different components go on. You can do that here and you can also of course change it in the FE editor once you're done if you'd like. Um, so you can do that. Once you're done, you go to File, Done. See, that's what happens when you don't use numbers. You get warnings when you don't use the correct numbers. But anyway, it brings it into the FEA editor here. And you can, of course, go back and edit that. So right now, we just have the cylinder and the head on the cylinder. They're both shell elements, or if you were in a linear stress analysis, it say plate elements. You can go in and define the thickness of these shell elements. Uh, of course, you can also combine different parts under one part if you'd like. Uh, let's say you had multiple heads and nozzles and so on, and you get a lot of parts listed here. You can consolidate by selecting the lines on the parts and changing their attributes into one single part and so on. But as you can see, this is generating, um, oops a geometry for you right away. You don't have to create the model by hand. And not only that, if you don't like the mesh or you want to change some dimension, you can go back and edit it. You don't have to recreate the model from scratch. So if I go back to Tools, Pressure Vessel, I'll be able to come back here and um, let's say change something. Let me make that 30. And done. And that will change the dimension here for me. There we go. It's shorter now. But like I said, you can add multiple nozzles, you can have flanges, you can have heads and on all of these nozzles. You can change the angle of them and their position and everything that you would need to create such a model. So it's a very handy tool. Any questions on that? Anyone? I don't see any questions that have uh, come in here. Uh, let's see. Again, to, to access that, you'd have to go basically create a new file. You go to New and PV Designer Model and click New. That's how you access it. Yeah, so I, I think this is a really um, you know great tool if you're going to be doing uh, either of the, uh, the load setups here, um, you know limit load, elastic plastic, or um, simply elastic. You know you, you get the option to create that geometry pretty um, pretty simply, and you generate a um, you know a pretty uniform mesh there. Um, so if you're going to be going in and defining a 
you know, just a simple elastic material properties, or if you're going in and doing a, a solid model there, um, you've got a lot of options um, to do that. And then um, if you're going to set up um, you know, a plate model, you'll have the option in your results environment to pull out those membrane and bending stresses. Um, that's something that you know you, you don't have to go into the stress linearization tool to use if you're using uh, plate or shell elements. Um, so it's easy to pull out some of those uh, values if you need to. Yeah, once you define those nozzles, you know, you can see that the geometry is not simple to generate by hand, that saddle shape. And that's, you know, one of the big advantages of using the PV designer here. You get the intersection of two cylinders that otherwise, you know, is not too straightforward to create by hand. Take this back to Andrew. Yeah, so it doesn't really look like there are too many more questions coming in. So um, if you guys are okay and nobody has anything else to ask, we can go ahead and end the webinar today. And then, um, as always, we like to send out the YouTube video. And additionally, um, as Andrew mentioned, you can um, look at the public folder, which is also sent to you in an email. Um, for results and so forth. So with that, I think we'll just go ahead and close it out today. All right. Well, I appreciate everyone joining us this morning. And if you have any other questions about, um, you know, setting up uh, your pressure vessel analysis, certainly don't hesitate to uh, to contact us through the. Uh, support uh, mechanisms or, um, you know, definitely in the forums. Um, I'd like to get a dialogue, dialogue started there if anyone's interested.